Today, I'm going to show you how to create illustrations without the need for any drawing skills. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a visual artist, graphic designer, but not an illustrator. I can make illustrations, however. I've done some for clients and personal work in the past and it sounds a bit dumb, but it's actually possible. And in today's video, I want to show my workflow so you can do it yourself. Before we start off, I wanted to let you know that you can get all the project files that I'm using in this video for yourself and use them in your own personal projects. Check out the link in the description down below to learn more or stick around until the explanation. Now let's dive into my process. To put it simple, what we're gonna be doing is creating traced illustrations. You might have done these as a kid when you would put a printed picture out of the window and you place one piece of paper over there and started drawing over it. The thing is, I'm gonna give you a couple of pointers on how to start creating this yourself, whether it's in Adobe Photoshop or just in real life. The most important thing in this technique is that you have to make a proper, good looking tracing material. After that, I'm gonna give you some pointers on how to pick the right Photoshop brush, but I'll also share some equipment when it comes to making analog work. Let's start with the trace material. I mainly use two different types of trace materials, a 3D render and a collage. The one we're gonna be making in this video is based off a 3D composition, but I've done some videos on my channel where I use the collage as well. Essentially, there's no need for any 3D skills in order to do this. So if you don't wanna dive into 3D and you just wanna do some collages, I have a beginner's guide on Photoshop collages and you can click on it right here or in the link in the description. That collage technique is exactly what helped me create the illustration for the back painting of this denim jacket that I made in another video. Anyways, let's get back to the 3D composition real quick. So as you can see, our setup is fairly simple. We have a 3D model of a skull that I found on Turbo Squid, and I made a chain link that goes through the mouth of the skull. And if you want to learn how to do this chain link in Cinema 4D, it's actually fairly simple, and I do have a separate video on it as well. So I rendered this in Octane, but essentially you can just do this in any renderer. Octane is just the render engine that I prefer to work in. The only thing that you need to take into account when doing a render is try to add some contrast when it comes to lighting your scene. For example, if we take a look at our composition here, there's an obvious shadow on the sides of the letters, as well as obvious shadows and highlights on the front of the skull, mainly around the uh, eye sockets and stuff like that. I also made sure that the uh, teeth have a different material, so they're a little bit lighter, and that's so that it's a little bit easier to see when we're gonna be starting to trace this thing. And one more thing, by the way, before you render this, I rendered a version with and without text, uh, just to be sure. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use this for yet, and I'm not sure if I wanna trace the text as well, or if I just want to place it over there. But one thing to note here is that you don't have to worry about the quality of your render. Yes, you have to render it at a certain size. For example, I think I rendered mine in a 2K, so it's a little bit higher quality than a full HD format, but 4K is a little bit too high, I think. But when it comes to samples in the Octane render, or when it comes to like ambient occlusion or global illumination, stuff like that, you don't need to worry about putting high sample values in there because we're going to just use this to trace over something. Before we dive into Photoshop, I wanted to let you know real quick how you can get the files that I'm making in this video. You can then download them and use them in your own projects if you want to. So I'm super close to 500 videos on my channel, which essentially means that my channel has over 500 videos soon, full of tutorials about graphic design, digital art and entrepreneurship as a freelancer. All of those 500 videos are out there for free. If it was up to me, I would always continue doing that. But in order to do so, I need to maintain a feasible income out of Dreadlabs. You see, coming up with these videos, writing the scripts, recording them, editing them, that takes a lot of time. If I was forced to get a nine to five day job, I wouldn't have any time to do these videos for you guys on a weekly basis anymore. And this is actually where my Patreon channel and my web store come in. On my web store, you'll find all kinds of assets, mainly in the graphic designers, such as textures, vector packs, mockups and more and on my patreon channel you'll find all sorts of perks first of all you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials so that's also where you can find the project file from this video you'll get access to my past live streams as well as a permanent 15 percent discount in the web store that i just talked to you about and on top of that you'll get an exclusive role in the dreadlabs community server which is where over 3,000 creatives come together give each other feedback ask questions and help each other become better creatives there's also a slightly higher tier that contains exclusive tutorials such as how to start your own clothing brand as well as an additional 100 project files which in total gives you access to over 300 project files if you pick the inner core tier. Of course, I understand that not everyone has the budget to become a Patreon member and that's completely fine as well. If you still want to support my channel, help out my cause, you can leave a like and a comment on this video to boost it in the algorithm. 
Of course, if you're not already subscribed, you should do that as well because new videos and new tutorials are coming away every single week. Also, be sure to ring that bell notification button because I heard from a lot of my subscribers that a lot of my videos don't really pop up in their subscription feed anymore. And clicking on that bell button should help with that. With that being said, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members because without you, there wouldn't be a Dreadlabs. Now let's head back into Photoshop and we'll continue with the guide. All right, so once we're in Photoshop, there's a couple of things we can do to make our life a little bit easier. First off, let's add a white background because this transparency grid isn't really nice to draw on. So we'll make a new layer and drop that to the bottom and we'll just fill this with white. So if you have a render or a collage that doesn't really have enough contrast, you can always just increase that by going to image, adjustments, levels. And once we crunch in these two, you should be able to get more contrast in your image. You can also get really crazy and start playing with the threshold. For example, this will just give your thing two colors. Um, it's a little bit overkill in my opinion and it just loses a lot of the quality and detail. Uh, you can also go into the filter gallery here and for example if you go to the sketch version and you go to stamp this gives you a little bit of a better control over uh, whatever it is that you want to make but i would always recommend just leaving your render or your collage as it is and just increasing the level values next you want to lower the opacity so we'll just lower the opacity maybe 30 percent that should be good and now we're basically ready to draw so we'll go to the brush tool and we'll go to the brush settings right here. So we'll start with a normal hard brush. We'll change the spacing to 1%. And under shape dynamics, uh, what I want to do is I want to actually have control with my drawing tablet over the size of this thing. Uh, as you can see, there aren't any drawing tablets connected. Otherwise, this wouldn't pop up. And that's because I want to show you something that if you don't have a drawing tablet, you can try it like this. I would always recommend using a drawing tablet for this. But of course, I understand if you don't have the budget and you still want to do something like this, you can try it this way. So by clicking on control pen pressure, you can also click on fade. With that fade, you should play around a little bit with what you want. I think 500 should be good. I'm going to change my foreground color to black. And I'm actually going to change my size here to 20 pixels. In my new layer, I'm going to show you what this looks like. Uh, by the way, guys, I also turn on smoothing. And my smoothing, I'll just put it to 50%. And as you can see, you can just draw out lines like this as well. And they will just decrease in size. You will be able to draw tapered lines. You might have the steady hand to do this, but in my opinion, this kind of sucks. And there are drawing tablets that are really cheap nowadays. I will link a couple of them in the description down below. They will be Amazon affiliate links. So I will earn a small amount of money if you buy them, but you don't pay anything extra. So if you want to get a drawing tablet and you want to support my channel while you're at it, get it through those links in the description down below. In the case that you're using a drawing tablet, you can change the control fade to pen pressure. I think most of the drawing tablets nowadays have pen pressure. I remember having a really old one maybe 10 years ago that didn't have it, but you should be able to have it. If you're pressing softly, the line will be sleek. And if you press harder, the line will be thicker. And that's what you want. Let me just delete all of this for a second. So now that you have both your reference and your brush ready, Let's try to find the shadows and the contours of our composition here. In my example, the eye sockets right here, as you can see this part and this part right here are like very prominent shadows here as well. This part here, I'm just going to like quickly sketch them out so you can see them for yourself. Same thing goes for this part here for the jawline, as well as the shadow right here. And from the back of the skull, like a really big one here that goes over the uh, eye socket right here and of course you should also take into account the contours of certain things for example the contours right around the teeth here and these contours right here honestly i don't even know if i'm saying that right contours but it makes me feel artsy and that's what we're all about in this video not being artists trying to be artists right so i'll just quickly continue sketching this here okay so i pointed out some like contours and shadows and stuff like that once we make our reference invisible, you should still be able to kind of see what we're drawing here. And as you can see, you can vaguely see a skull of some sorts in this. Uh, and that's what you want to do here. So look for these references in your own composition, collage, 3D render, whatever, and start pointing them out for yourself. So what you basically want to do at this point is draw around these things in a more uh, careful manner, not a sketch form like I did. Just draw slow lines, take your time and Try to do them as accurately as possible. Of course, because you're doing this in Photoshop, you have the Command or Control Z button. So take all the time that you need and most of all have fun with it. So let's dive into it and I'll show you what to do next after that.
All right, so now that we're finished with drawing those outlines out, uh, as you can see, I didn't really bother with all of the shadows and the reflections of the chains. Uh, I might just do that in the time lapse. I'm not sure yet because I have a little bit of a limited time schedule in order to record this video. Of course, you can do it however you like. I just wanted to show you a little bit of how this part of the process looks like. Uh, if we hide our reference, you should be able to see now what the actual drawing is. And uh, yeah, it's kind of obvious, I guess, or at least a little bit visible uh, on what, it, what we're drawing here. So the next part should be drawing in all of these shadows here. As you can see somewhere in the illustration, I might have been either doubling up with the shadows uh, or just adding lines that are going to be covered with a full black shadow. Uh, but yeah, that, that doesn't really matter uh, because the first part of the process should be as quick as possible. And I see that I forgot a couple of lines in the uh, chain here. So let me just fix that real quick. So a quick tip if you just want to fill out most of the colors and you've done a proper job with the outlines is you can just duplicate the layer that you drew in, pressing Ctrl or Command J on your keyboard. And with the paint bucket tool, you should then be able to click wherever you want to fill a shadow. Uh, for example, here, these parts should all be uh, part of the shadow. And this should help you get to a proper shadow more quickly. Uh, and of course, if you zoom in this way, what's happening is you can see these outlines right here. Uh, and I would just recommend drawing over that because once you start trying to fill it in as well, you get these really harsh uh, edges here and that's not really what you want i think so i would just go grab your tablet or your mouse and just simply lower the smoothing on your brush and go over these lines here and of course if there are any other spots you might have missed uh, you can also simply just fill those in so let's just do that right now real quick All right, let me just turn off the reference image here. And as you can see, we have a decent illustration of a skull without knowing how to draw a skull or knowing about shadows or anything whatsoever. I'm looking at my recording time right now and I'm not even one hour in. So, so I could make this within an hour, which is a pretty nice return on investment if you take a look at what we've made without having to know any drawing skills. You can also, of course, add colors if you'd like or add in more detail, draw in extra smaller spots of shadows. It all depends on how much detail you want in your design, of course. That being said, however, if you want to actually become better at drawing or digital art or using your tablet, this is a good stepping stone. I can already hear comments coming in like, oh, you're not a real artist, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry about it. If you want to learn how to use your drawing tablet or draw with your mouse, you can start out like this, start tracing. The next step would be drawing with a reference next to you on the second monitor or, you know, putting some piece of paper next to your screen or something like that that shows you that you can also draw in with a reference next to you. And hopefully, eventually, you can just start drawing out from sketch or maybe even with freehand altogether. I just want to quickly say that and, of course, use this disclaimer to tell you that I am not against any digital artist or whatever. But sometimes there is just people in the comments down below that would get mad at something and I wanted to get that out of the way, of course. Now that I've done this in Photoshop, there's also a method to do this in real life. I used this technique when I did some illustrations for my asset pack, the Rave Flyer Essentials, which contains a lot of illustrations that you can use in your designs yourself. If you want to check that out. So these are Pigma markers. They're also known as brush pens. You have them from different brands, I think. I just prefer these because you have three different weights. They basically work the same as the Photoshop brush that we made. So the harder you push down, the thicker your line will get. And once you let go a little bit, you can taper those lines off. So I've used two different methods in order to trace my designs. The first one is this thing. Um, it's basically a tracing tablet or a light table. You can get them in different sizes actually. This is just an A4 size. Uh, you can just simply plug it in with a micro USB cable and then it lights up from behind you. So it essentially works the same as a window. It's just a little bit easier to draw on rather than a window of course. There's also another method and that's what I use in order to do the larger images such as the back design of a denim jacket. And I'm also going to start tufting rugs real soon and I'm going to use the same method for that as well. And that's using a beamer. There's actually a couple of cheap options online. I'll see if I can link the beamer that I use in the description down below as well. That way you can just simply open the image on your laptop or your computer and just connect your beamer to it and place that beamer so that it projects onto your canvas or your jacket or whatever you want to draw on. So with all of that being said, I hope this video was useful for you guys. I hope I give you enough pointers in order to start doing your first illustrations 
or get you started in digital art or maybe even physical art. Like I said, if you want to get the image files or the Cinema 4D file or even the Photoshop file of the illustration that I made in this video, you can get them through my Patreon. The link will be down in the description. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and a subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next video.